cops knew who I was. After Richard Mallory died, I left prints everywhere, and they covered it up and let me kill the rest of those guys to turn me into a serial killer. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our channel where we talk about the darkest and most disturbing aspects of human behavior. Today, we'll be discussing the top 10 most disturbing interviews with killers. These interviews are not for the faint of heart, so viewer discretion is advised. Uh, an object for pleasure instead of a, a living, breathing human being. Uh, it, it seems to make it easier to uh, do things you shouldn't do. Number 10, Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer is known as one of the most notorious serial killers in history. In his interview with Stone Phillips, he discussed how he lured his victims and the brutal acts he committed on them. His calm demeanor and lack of remorse during the interview is what makes it so chilling. I tried to uh, create uh, living zombies with uh, muridic acid in the, in the drill. Uh, but it, it never worked. No, a killing wasn't, wasn't the objective. I just wanted to have the person under my complete control. Uh, you are scheduled to be executed tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock if you don't receive another stay. What is going through your mind? What thoughts have you had in these last few days? Number 9, Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy was a charming and charismatic individual, which is what made it so difficult for investigators to catch him. In his interview with James Dobson, he discussed how pornography had fueled his murderous fantasies and how he was not able to control his impulses. How long well, I, well, I would say, I would say a couple of years. And what was I was dealing with there were very strong inhibitions against criminal behavior, violent behavior that had been conditioned into me, bred into me, in my environment, in my neighborhood, in my church. Well, I'm not an expert. I'm not an authority. I'm someone who has been a murderer for almost 20 years. Number 8, Ed Kemper. Ed Kemper, also known as the co-ed killer, was a necrophiliac and serial killer who murdered his grandparents, mother, and several college students. In his interview with FBI agent John E. Douglas, he discussed his troubled childhood and how it led to his violent behavior. And then a gun is in the car, hidden, and is craving this awful, raging, eating feeling inside. Been in jail, or prison, a long time, all my life. I was raised up in here. So I understand jail, so I understand myself and I can deal with that. Number 7, Charles Manson. Charles Manson is perhaps one of the most infamous cult leaders in history. In his interview with Geraldo Rivera, he discussed his belief in an impending race war, which he called Helter Skelter. He also spoke about his twisted ideology and how he was able to manipulate his followers. Again, mm -hmm. well you guys are misinformed, I haven't killed anyone. I didn't break the law. Judge knew that. But the people didn't want to hear it. That's uh, what happens when, this is why I try so fervently to, to reach people with the gospel, because I know what Satan can do to a person. Number six, David Berkowitz. David Berkowitz, also known as the Son of Sam, terrorized New York City in the 1970s. In his interview with Maury Terry, he claimed that he was not acting alone and that there was a larger satanic conspiracy at work. His erratic behavior during the interview only added to the disturbing nature of his crimes. Troubled and tormented person. Uh, was a, I believe that I was a demon possessed. And the reason is because I allowed Satan to enter into me. And they had they had the intercom on in the room, and they kept lying that it wasn't on. And they were using sonic pressure on my head since 1997. Number five, Aileen Warnos. Aileen Warnos was a prostitute who murdered several men in Florida in the 1980s. 
In her interview with Nick Broomfield, she discussed the abuse and trauma she had endured throughout her life, which ultimately led to her becoming a killer. Her candidness and lack of remorse made for a difficult but compelling interview. Walk in, just open the door, walk in, and then pull the pistol. What gun? What pistol? Uh, 357 Magnum. Number 4, Dennis Reader. Dennis Reader, also known as the BTK Killer, terrorized Wichita, Kansas for over 30 years. In his interview with police detective Dennis Folk, he discussed his sexual fantasies and how he was able to control his urges for years before eventually giving in to them. I strolled down the streets and stalked young boys and slaughtered them. Hell, if you could see my schedule, my work schedule, you know damn well that I was never out there. Number 3, John Wayne Gacy. John Wayne Gacy, also known as the Killer Clown, was a serial killer who murdered 33 young men and boys in Illinois in the 1970s. In his interview with Jason Moss, he discussed how he was able to lure his victims and the gruesome details of his crimes. His matter-of-fact demeanor during the interview is what makes it so disturbing. What do they want to do there? Uh, just to have her stop and uh, but how number two Gary Ridgway Gary Ridgway also known as the Green River Killer was responsible for the deaths of at least 49 women in Washington State in the 1980s and 1990s in his interview with Sheriff Dave Reichert he discussed how he targeted vulnerable women and the methods he used to dispose of their bodies uh, her for uh, Pushing and pushing and pushing on me to to remember, and I just couldn't remember, and I just wanted her to stop. How would you make the face masks? I'd make them with mattress shape. I'd pack them with right out with paper so they dry, and sometimes bring a little salt on. Number one, Ed Gain. Ed Gain is perhaps one of the most infamous serial killers in history. In his interview with Robert Block, he discussed how he used the body parts of his victims to create household objects, such as lampshades and chairs. His gruesome crimes and bizarre behavior have inspired numerous horror films, making this interview all the more disturbing to watch. Gaines' interview is a glimpse into the mind of a deeply disturbed individual who was obsessed with death and the macabre. I think that's right. You know, the key's no good. It's all dried out. Just answer the questions, Eddie, and we'll get you another sandwich. That's it for our top 10 most disturbing interviews with killers. We hope this video provided some insight into the minds of these notorious individuals and the horrific acts they committed. It's important to remember that the victims and their families are the ones who have truly suffered, and we must never forget their stories. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.